welcome to Stronger Together Survival to Revival. Thank you for joining us today. Um, welcome back to anybody that's been on any of our webinars and special focus sessions in the last few weeks. And hello to people that are joining us for the first time. Um, it's good in a bizarre way to be here. <laughs> I'm sure we all wish we were just carrying on as we were back in January, February, but we aren't. We are where we are, which is one of those very favorite expressions of the, um, of the time, isn't it? But the reason for being here is that we are moving gradually out of lockdown um, and we are approaching some semblance of a new normal, but there are many you know, sort of conversations about what is a new normal, of course, it's, it's a very difficult, it's like playing football with goalposts constantly changing, it's just a bit of a nightmare really. So I thought I'd bring together the panellists um, that were on the original Stronger Together webinar back. There was such an amazing synergy and such amazing advice and help offered to people. The feedback was absolutely phenomenal. So I wanted to bring everybody back together again and I'm really pleased that this time we are also joined by Max Dickens, who I will introduce in a bit, but thank you for joining us, Max. Um, so for me, it's all, oh, it's, it's really is moving, isn't it, from survival to revival. We have, the majority of businesses have survived. Um, there's been help out there, and um, that's from other individuals, other businesses, but from the government as well. Um, but there's a real sense that actually, you know, we're just moving into the next stage. And you know, all of the help that's been offered, it's, it's, the books have got to balance in some way in the future. So there is a very real threat of, of some rather big possible recession in the future and, the, and I rather like analogies and it's like we are at the helm of our own small boat and our boat is our business and we can um, we're very agile we can change direction we can change course but suddenly out of the blue a massive storm appeared and that was um, coronavirus and we are battered and bruised and now we're having a little bit of time we can take a bit of time out a bit of respite to actually see what we would have done differently, where we were most affected, how we were most damaged, and we can repair and we can get ourselves in a really good position to move forward and to weather any storms in the future. So that was the reason really for bringing this panel together now. So thank you everybody for joining me. And I'm going to introduce each of the panelists and then each of the panelists is going to share their biggest takeaway from the last few weeks and their three top tips to actually uh, reviving and moving forward and um, shoring ourselves up for the um, whatever we have to weather in the future. So I'm going to introduce each of them and they're going to give a little wave um, and then we will go into uh, the, the session fully. So first of all I'd like to welcome back George Swift George is a mindset and attitude expert. He has been helping dozens and dozens of businesses over the last few weeks. So really pleased that George is able to be here today. Look, good haircut there, George. I'm liking the haircut, it's very good. <laughs> <laughs> and I would also like to welcome back Jo Medhurst. Jo is um, a well-being uh, guru. She is just phenomenal. So she's been helping also lots and lots of business owners and their families just to really weather the storm and, and build up their immunity with some very sensible advice and looking to hear, forward to hearing from Jo. We've got Tori back again, um, helping us with all the finances, making sure that um, our finances are in as healthy a position as possible. And Tori's been helping so many businesses um, over the last few weeks with it, enormous value in content coming out. As soon as the government has actually announced something, she's been there explaining it and making sense for us. So thank you, Tori. We've also got Amanda back again. So thank you, Amanda, for joining us. Uh, Amanda is a sales guru. She um, helps us make sales into a very positive thing um, and um, she'll be talking about that I'm sure and I'm going to touch on that as well. So we've also got Ollie. Um, many of you uh, know Ollie from the previous session. Ollie um, is a former army officer um, and through his own journey through PTSD, um, through experiences in Afghanistan, um, has actually started a business with uh, a couple of colleagues uh, to help um, the organizations have their staff mentally fit. So thank you, Ollie, for joining us today. We've also got Caroline back again. Caroline is an HR expert and uh, she's been helping an enormous number of businesses make sense of furloughing and all of that stuff. <laughs> so looking to hear, forward to hearing from Caroline. Andy's joining us from an IT perspective. Thank you, Andy, again, helping so many businesses um, with some really great tips and help and just a really sensible approach. And what I particularly like about Andy is he has a marketing background as, an, as well as an IT background. So he's coming at um, all of this from two very, very healthy angles. And we also have Sarah joining us. Sarah's 
Sangster. Thank you for coming back, Sarah. Uh, Sarah is a digital marketing guru. Basically, what Sarah doesn't know about digital marketing isn't worth knowing. So really pleased that Sarah's here. The other member of the panel that couldn't be here today is uh, Nikki Kinson. She was here with us last time, but we do have a video from her. She's going to help with cash flow. And if the video doesn't work, then I'll share the video afterwards. And Tori's going to help pick up um, some of the very good knowledge that Nikki would be sharing normally. And finally, thank you, Max, for joining us. Max has worked with Facebook, Google, all these big boys. Max is a comedian, a published author, and he does a lot of improv, which would scare me rigid, quite frankly. But so Max is joining us to help shed some light on how we can be unique and stand out from the crowd. Because there's a lot of noise out there right now. So Max is going to help us um, understand storytelling and how we can stand out from the crowd. So thank you for joining us, Max. So first of all, we're going to go to to George, who's going to share his biggest takeaway from the, um, the last few weeks and three top tips to help us uh, approach the future. So thank you for joining us, George. Over to you. Thank you for having me, Julia. And I did cut this myself, believe it or not, but I cut it to about there. And then I did have a bit of help, the bits I couldn't see. As is the case, who would have thought we would have ever been in a place where we were cutting our own hair and doing our own dentistry? Anyway, that's the world we live in right now. And that's why obviously we're on this webinar because everything's gone a little bit mental upside down. Um, Julia's absolutely 100% right. Um, we, we can't sit around waiting anymore. I know some people are still thinking, let's wait for the world to come back to normal and I can go back to normal that obviously isn't happening anytime soon so we have to go out and work with uh, what we have right now so my biggest takeaway actually is is uh, what I've seen so so like 10 years right 10 years we've been going BBB for over eight years we've been running success groups and, and our masterminds so we've always really heavily pushed the the power of a community and what I've seen is not just within our own community but how important the community has been over the past uh, what nearly three months now and uh, those people that are in the right communities, the communities that make them feel better about what they're doing, that push them, that, that empower them, that educate them, where you're part of a team spirit that moves forward. I've really seen that, 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 that absolute, um, almost like the movement that we've been on for, for the last 10 years, really just show the power of itself, not just within, I say, our own company, but just out there generally, just the power of being in the right communities with the right people. So for me, you know, I always say this, you know, um, it's never great going it alone, but in a really good economy, going it alone, you can get away with it. I think what we're going into right now, you need to find your tribe, you need to find your people, people that inspire you, people that, that make you want to be better, do better, people that, that, that motivate you and drive you. Um, but also support you through the tough times and that. And I think if you're not part of that kind of community right now, you need to go out and find your tribe. You need to go and find those people who are going to nurture you and support you, but also going to give that kick up the arse that you might need to do some of the things you might not want to do that you're going to have to do moving forward with what we're now currently facing that we're staring down the barrel at. So for me, my, my number one takeaway is just... Um, just the evidence out there of just how powerful being part of the right community is. Um, I'm lucky to have a number of you on this panel right now to be part of that community as well. And, uh, and I promise you, my community, I've supported it, but I promise you, it's supported me every bit as much as we've been supporting it, uh, supporting it through these tough times. Um, so that's been my biggest takeaway. Um, if you're not part of it, if you're not part of a community now, go and find one. Um, if you are part of one that doesn't make you feel great or isn't inspiring you in the right ways, go and find the one that is going to do that for you. My three things, however, because I only have a few minutes, I appreciate it. I could talk all day on this stuff. My three things. Okay, number one, I've been pushing this all day long. Sales. Okay, we're going to hear in a minute about sales, I'm sure. But here's the thing. Uh, you're going to have to sell yourself out of this mess, right? It's, it's as simple as that. Now, sales isn't just cold calling. It's going to be referrals and it's going to be having partners and all these sort of things. But I'll tell you now, um, we've, been, we've been given a gift over the past couple of months, few months by the government. Uh, you know, we've been given, uh, I mean, the most crazy, insane loans that I think has ever been invented. You fill out a form and 50 grand turns up in your account. This is artificially propping up a situation that exists out there right now. The reason that's been happening is because many more businesses would be out of business right now. If it wasn't for furlough, if it wasn't for grants, if it wasn't for uh, the loans, there would be many, many more businesses right now that would be already flat on their back within two to three months. That money's drying up, it's dried up. If we go into another lockdown, I'm not sure it's gonna come back. I'll be honest with you, I can't see how they can find the money again. My, my, you've got to sell and selling is what's going to wean you off the bosom of the government. You don't want to be beholden to the government loans, grants. You don't want to be in that place. Take what you can, take what you need, take what's on offer. By all means, we have, and I think you should, 
Um, but sales is what's going to get you to wean yourself off of that bosom of the government. Um, and fundamentally, um, to, 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 to go out there and to, to, to be masters of our own destiny and, and, and everything else. And most small businesses and stuff, you know, they don't have a brilliant sales game. So by upping their sales game, they're going to massively improve their chances of not just surviving, but going on and, and thriving. My second thing is very much closely related to that, which is positioning and niching. Um, I think you cannot get away with being a generalist at the best of times. In a good, in a good market, you can be lazy at sales. You can be lazy with marketing. In what we're going in, and let's be honest, Julia painted a very nice picture there. We are tanking. The go the America's talking about a second Great Depression. We're talking about global recession. We're talking about the worst economy known in history. Um, so let's spell that out and let's deal with what we're facing here right now. In that kind of shitstorm, um, you're not going to get away with being a generalist anymore. You're going to have to niche, maybe even super niche in there. And then you need to position yourself in that marketplace so that your audience sees you above the noise. It's gonna get chaotic. There's gonna be a thousand people in your industry running around like headless chickens. You need to be the ones that have got your messaging on point, your niching on point, your positioning on point, so that your audience can see you amongst the noise that is almost definitely gonna be coming soon, which is everyone just desperate for business. Uh, and my very last one is uh, beyond partnerships. I've been talking about a lot about partnerships and partnering up and JVs. Um, again, you're going to climb this really, this, this really uh, steep mountain, this really tough terrain, which is the economy we're facing right now. You don't want to go it alone. You want to have the right people around you, the right partnerships. And what I've been talking about more recently is what I've been, I've been pushing for a little while, actually, is this concept of business ecosystem. So rather than just a straight joint venture where you pass leads around and, you know, you might do, you know, you, you, know, you, you kind of just trying to find clients for each other or you just offload your clients that you don't want that's one part of partnering but i do believe we're going into a new era uh, of entrepreneurism and business and i think it's the it's the ecosystems that are going to work just like us with the planet you can't just take and take and take it has to be something where you put in as much as what you're taking out then you create a, a sustainable model uh, for businesses so for me it's, it's finding those people that, that share your values um, that have commonality in like your, your overall jigsaw puzzle so you fit together neatly together and together you're stronger and together you you support each other um but also it's, it's one where uh everyone thrives because everybody in that survives and it's, it's it's less about competition and me beating other people and it's more about us as a community coming together to to survive this and i've been saying this for a while now i think the age of of, of pure competition is gone competition will always be there but i think the age of competition has got to be over because um, I need every other business owner around me to survive this as well, because we need to create an entrepreneurial landscape in the future that we can all survive in and thrive in. And we can't do that in a cutthroat nature that maybe we have been in for the last maybe 10 years or so, where the strongest survives and all this sort of stuff. What's the point in surviving if you're the only one? So we need that, you know, that the whole entrepreneurial landscape, I think, to shift slightly and to come together and realize that even my, 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 most fiercest of allies, I'm sorry, my most fiercest of enemies is now my ally. There's a great saying, right, which is my enemy's enemy is my ally. Is that, it's a great quote that I've ruined in the last slide. My enemy's enemy is my ally. I think it's something like that, right? Or my enemy's enemy is my friend. And that's what it is. The terrain, the landscape, the recession, whatever the hell's coming down the line, that is our common enemy as all business owners. And therefore, together, we are all allies. I don't know if that's five minutes, probably more, Julia, but there you go. It's good <laughs> Slightly more, but um, <laughs> thank you all. Absolutely worthwhile. And, you know, thank you, George. Um, yeah, I agree. I've been um, using big business ecosystem for a while now as well. And I think, you know, we have our own business ecosystem here. The panellists on this um, on this session are a business ecosystem. And um, But I do think that it's people find it quite hard to shift from that competitive um, mindset into a collaborative mindset. And I think that um, I think that us doing this is showing that it's really positive and I think there are many positive groups out there that are doing the, a similar thing so absolutely brilliant and of course BBB is one of those um, so thank you George words of wisdom as always thank you so Joe is next Joe is um, going to help us make sure that we as business owners are in the best state possible to weather any future storms so over to you Joe 
Thanks, Julia. Um, yeah, just start with what I think my, my, one of my biggest takeaways from this whole lockdown is I think mine would be that small kindness goes a long way. Just, you know, smiling at people on your walks and receiving that back and um, staying in touch, people checking in with each other um, and, you know, sending small gifts, things like that and cards and things in the post. I think that's been such an important thing for keeping people going. And I'm hoping that that's going to go forward where people kind of continue to appreciate it. And I think that's true in the business world as well. Just, you know, take the time out to um as george talking a lot about community there and i think you know bringing in those small kindnesses into that and just people appreciating that more um, and it goes a really long way at the minute and we can kind of bring that into everything we're doing and with the knowledge of how much that's appreciated and how much we appreciate it hopefully we'll see that kind of continuing on so that would be a big takeaway for me from what's happened so far in terms of uh, three tips my first one would be looking at scheduling i think a lot of people obviously some people have had the busiest time yet so, you know depending on what they're going on with but for a lot of people um work life and social life and every other part of life has slowed right down and as we're coming out of lockdown i would say just be mindful of your scheduling and rather than just kind of throwing yourself back into it full on without any kind of awareness if you're not careful about kind of building things back up gradually you're risking some burnout and as business owners that is a big risk if you get burnt out at this point you are going to be in trouble um so that you know there's lots to think about there's lots to do but start building your schedule up again gradually not throwing yourself into it 100 and then going back to the gym and then doing you know 20 social events at the weekend and stuff you know focus on i would say making some time to prioritize what's important um and then you and the stuff that's fun as well so that's uh, you know giving you a bit more back from that and then doing that with you looking at your schedule in that way you're a lot like less likely to have that real burnout problem and fatigue and energy crisis um that you because you are going to need a lot of that going forward so i would say really thinking about the scheduling in terms of that is going to be useful and also a good time to kind of reassess is there anything that was in your schedule before that you don't need um, that, that you can get rid of that maybe wasn't serving you as well as you thought it might be and equally take it making sure you're taking the time to build in that self-care I think some people have been a lot better at that lately and making sure that doesn't get left at the wayside because you're going to need these energy levels um, up in the next few months so that would be the first thing uh, the next thing I would say is focus on the good habits and forget about all the bad ones that you've developed. We've all had some bad habits that we've picked up during this lockdown session. And if you're taking all that guilt um, and bringing it into the next period of time, that is that is going to be sapping away energy and um, and eating away at your mindset for what you need to be doing going forward. Um, and I would say just you know, a lot of people in terms of like physical health, you've picked up um, some good habits, I'm sure as well. So you know, take, building in a bit more self care, that's great. You know, going for more walks outside, brilliant. You do more batch cooking that's great focus on the good stuff and trying to keep that and forgive yourself for all the bad stuff just let it go if you spend a lot of time focusing on that you're not going to have energy to kind of get things back and just remembering you know if you like I know I've heard of quite a few people really stressing about oh I've put on a bit of weight I haven't done as much exercise I would I haven't done these hobbies that everyone's been saying they've been doing and they've been developing don't worry about it you know we've all had to deal with something that is completely alien to us and just not stressing about that and just you've you've taken the time to deal with it in your own way and you've got there that's great so not stressing about it letting that go and focusing on the good stuff that you can bring in and you're going to find that's going to again it's helping the energy levels and um, that's going to feel a lot better just going forward um and then talking about bad habits the last tip would be how to overcome your sugar addiction which most of us have now got i think a lot of people have uh, have been indulging and things like that which is fine but if you're finding that you're actually now at the point where you're getting sugar cravings then that is not you, that you've developed a sweet tooth you have got a sugar addiction um so it's not i'm not saying by any means to completely cut that out you can still indulge as you need to but if you're getting sugar cravings you need to get that back under control because that started to have an impact on your blood sugar and the best way to do that is to take chromium so chromium is the mineral that our body uses to balance our blood sugar levels if you've had a period of time where you've had a higher consumption of sugar then your chromium levels are going to have dropped um, low chromium also has an impact on um, mental health and a bunch of other stuff as well so it is a good one to to make sure that your levels are really good on that um, taking that in a food source supplement i did a post on my uh, facebook this morning this is a, a little list 
list there of which brands are more likely to be food source but normally it will say food source or natural source on it and um, if you're not having a food source supplement it's very hard to absorb you're wasting your money a little bit so making sure it's a food source supplement um, for chromium you can take that in a multivitamin mineral or just on its own just according to the packet and um, to taking that for sort of two or three weeks and that will help really reduce the, the sugar cravings and then you can get things back under your control a little bit and having some fruit in the house as well so you're reaching for and reach for that first rather than the sugary snacks the fiber in the fruit, fruit means the sugar from the fruit won't impact your blood sugar in the same way and uh, then having a bit of protein in the mornings can make a bit of difference so I'll stop you getting any sugar cravings in the afternoon so tackling it all that way when you're not getting the sugar cravings you can have your snacking under your control in a way that you're happy with so there's a lot of people when they're getting the cravings they feel like it's not in their control they're struggling with it so it doesn't mean never having any sugar again it's about being in control of where you are with um, with your snacking and getting it back to a level that you're happy with and then that won't have such an impact in terms of chromium on your mental health and other things like that so those would be my three tips going forward thank you joe very helpful and of course i suppose that if we're not having those sugar spikes then we're able to maintain a more consistent approach to our day and achieve more so yeah thank you that's absolutely. really helpful thank you i shall be reading your um article your blog on your <laughs> or your post on your facebook page later thank you Great. for that no. and i'll also share that with um the people on this webinar as well so uh thank you joe and uh next i'd like to go to caroline uh, our hr expert who's going to share her uh, biggest takeaway and her three top tips for managing to get through the next few weeks and months wonderful thanks julia um my top tip from the last three months actually was has led me to restructuring my business in as much as I love sales. Um, like George was saying, everybody was into sales and selling and selling. And I realized that actually during, it's not an HR tip this bit, it will be HR in a minute. It's, it's a sales tip at the moment is that um, most of my business is retainer business, but we needed new sales, new signups every month to meet the bills and that bit of profit. And then suddenly nobody was buying but the retainer income kept coming in. And my biggest thing is that I have now scrapped my setup fees and I am just getting people on to retainer because I know that they will stay with us for four or five years. Um, and yes, I'd lose a little bit at the beginning, but then I've got that regularity of income and that's what you can plan with. And, and that is the biggest thing that I've done that I'm like, I knew it was important, but it wasn't until I couldn't do the other sales that I realized how important. So that's my biggest tip from these three months. Um, I did have three tips for Julia. Um, I'm now going to do something totally different. So obviously put those three out. Um, this is for those of you who employ staff. There are three things, that, or three things, there's several things you need to be thinking about. Um, the positive thing, if you haven't already got involved in it, is the flexible furlough scheme, which has the acronym FFS, which does not mean for fuck's sake. Sorry, I didn't say that, obviously. But I'm just saying it. I can't believe an HR1 had the acronym FFS, really. Anyway, flexible furlough from the the 1st of July is the best it, it's a fantastic thing that the government has done it was wonderful with the furlough and like George says we it, we a lot of us wouldn't have survived without that but now we've got to wean ourselves off and from the 1st of July you can combine furlough with them working you can change their working hours from week to week this is not a thing that you need to consult on you do need to give them I would say at least 24 hours working hours notice of what you want but it's that you can say first week in July, right, I need you in for 10 hours, okay? And then the rest is made up um, by the government. The week after you say, actually, it's gone really well, I need you in for 20 hours. The week after that, you can say you only want them in for five hours, okay? That is going to carry on now until the end of October. The amount you can get back from the government is going down. In August, it's still 80%. Then it goes down to 60%. And then I've lost the will to live and we'll worry about October in October. Okay, guys. But the point is that it's now is a good time to start opening up again, start doing those sales as we're going to hear about in a minute. Um, get that out there and not have to commit to having people back full time. Okay. Uh, the second bit is if you are, you know, your businesses, you know, your numbers, we've been saying this since the beginning. Um, if you think you're not going to have people be able to have the people back that you've got, you need to be with your business head on 
okay, business head now, thinking about your timings, okay? Anybody under two years, you can just give them their notice. You don't have to go through a process and you would pay, they'd be on furlough during their notice period. You would get 80% back from the government. You would pay them 100%, okay? Those are really straightforward ones. Um, the ones that are gonna be more tricky are the ones who are over two years. You need to do a process for them. So going on the current deadlines to get the most benefit out of the system, okay, because we all pay into the system, we want to get a little bit back, is you need to be having them having their, say, their month's notice period and the consultation period while they're on furlough. So if we work backwards, the 80% furlough ends at the end of August. So if you have them on their notice period in the whole of August, okay, you need to have started the consultation period three weeks before that, which is the 13th of July, is the latest date to get that all in in the note in the furlough time which means you need to have been talking to us or another provider at least a week beforehand usually two weeks if you're not already with an hr person who knows you you need to leave at least two weeks to sort out what you're doing before you start the process so you're looking at um, certainly at the beginning of July you need to be starting getting that process what's your structure chart going forward everything like that okay you are running it out of time I, I still can't believe that we're almost mid-June to me in my head because of lockdown I still think we're sort of you know end of April it's plenty of time no mid-June furlough will end at the end of August do not get to the end of August and then say oh I think I should make somebody redundant because you still have to pay them the hundred percent but you'll only get the sixty percent back from the government okay this is the time to do it I, I'm not done with and heartless but that you need to see what needs to be done for the business going forward so that the business survives and then you can take on more people in the future but you need to be thinking how can I get the best out of this situation okay and then if you do have any problem people who we have had these conversations where you don't want to come back from furlough but you also don't want to do a redundancy which is a little bit tricky um then you need to be talking to an hr provider such as ourselves about settlement agreements and we can do those as well they're not cheap but they are very effective um but you need to be sorting this out now don't wait until july august september don't think you're going to be doing this oh when furlough runs out at the end of october then i'll decide no that's far too late you need to be sorting that out now that's it thank you thank you caroline wow thank goodness for people like you what an absolute minefield i mean it's just goodness um okay so thank you very wise words there and obviously um caroline's details are, are out there so if you would like to ask her any questions specifically either in the chat or if you want a confidential conversation then please make contact with caroline she's she's helping so many people thank you caroline okay so this is a bit of a high risk strategy i am going to try and share a video that nikki kinton has um recorded in true blue peter style this is something we prepared earlier so fingers crossed that this is going to actually work Hi everybody, uh, nice to be back with you again. Thank you very much to Julia for the invite. Um, so I'm here to talk about how you can manage your cash flow. And as we come out of here, it's going to be very important that we consider very carefully the impact of the sales that we make have on our bottom line. Um, now, <clears throat> not every sale is created equal. Uh, every sale we make is a risk. Um, that we take um, the risk of not being paid, um, but the level of risk will be different for each sale. As we come out of lockdown, um, there are going to be a lot of businesses out there who are struggling, um, and we will see a lot of business failures over the next few months. So there will be people out there that really need what you do um, or what you sell in order for them to continue to trade, but they actually can't afford it. So you need to think of whether you A, want to sell to them at all, is the risk too big versus the amount of money you could make from that to the margin, or are there alternative ways for you to be able to say yes? So um, th things like um, breaking an order down into smaller chunks, say for products, so, and then you can make sure you're paid for the first proportion of it before you ship any more. Um, for services, it's getting about getting payment up front, or if it's for a longer project, getting stage payments along the way. And thinking about how you find out 
and that information. So are you doing credit checks? Are you asking around? What sort of conversation are you going to have with that client to establish really whether they can afford what they're asking to buy? The next stage would be to be very clear in your how you want to trade with somebody. So this is going to your, but to your terms and conditions, and I'm making an assumption here that you all have terms and conditions. Um, but the, the key here is to make sure that A, that they're fit for purpose, and B, that you use them for every transaction. Don't rely just on trust alone. Having terms and conditions is not about not trusting somebody. It's about being very clear um, on what the expectations are for both parties. And it's about being um, setting out um, the complete details so that there is no misunderstandings. There's no he said, she said, or I thought you meant this, or I thought you meant that. It enables you to set some very clear outcomes that you can both be measured against. So you know, the outcome we all know is that you will pay as 14 days from date of invoice, whatever that, that your terms are. Um, and you, the outcomes that the client can expect from you is things like when you will deliver, the, the level of care you will take over what you're doing, that, those sorts of things. Um, so it's really important that you have checked your terms over, that you've had them reviewed to make sure that they um, take into account any changes you've made to adapt to COVID-19 um, and the, any of those changes that will be permanent going forward. And finally, uh, the last thing is about being informed and that's about creating a cash flow forecast and updating it regularly. And by regularly, I don't mean once a month or even once a week. I'm talking about it daily, preferably. Uh, it might seem like a chore, but your cash flow forecast is your biggest tool to give you an early warning of any trouble ahead. So if you know that you're going to have a cash flow gap in a week or two weeks' time, you can make plans to deal with that gap rather than finding yourself standing on the precipice of an staring into an empty bank account. So um, Blaine Birch actually does a really good analogy about this in his book Pandemic Cash Flow, and he talks about cash flow as being a light, uh, cash flow forecast as being a lighthouse, and your business is a ship, and you are the captain of that ship. So that lighthouse is flashing every you know, every few seconds uh, and warning you of uh, rocks or shallow ground. If that warning light is only happening once every five minutes, you're going to get closer to that danger before you know that it's there. So, uh, so you have less time to react to it. Um, if, it only, if it's only flashing every half an hour, then actually you've got to be so super focused um, as the captain on looking at that point that you would not miss it. Um, if there's any fog, if there's any distractions, then there's every chance that you'd never see it. And if it only flashed once a week, well, you're relying on blind luck at that point. So creating and, and man, maintaining a cash flow forecast is a essential tool for your business to make sure that it can navigate properly out of COVID-19. So that's me, Nikki Kinton from Competent Cashflow. If you'd like to get in touch, you can do so via my website, that's uh, confidentcashflow.com. And um, I would really love it if you would sign up to our mailing list uh, so that you can uh, receive updates and useful info um, and resources directly to your inbox. So thank you very much for listening. Bye-bye. So um, I'm coming at, uh, at my section of this talk with my accounting head on. And uh, the first thing that Julia asked us to talk about was what our takeaway has been from the last uh, period that we've just been over. And I think the bit that I've noticed and I'd like to share with you guys is that those businesses that I've seen that have really not just survived but thrived over the last three months or so have been the ones that have got a very good habit of uh, knowing the numbers. And so uh, the clients that I've had that have been able to get the sort of um, loans and grants they were, they were wanting without too much hassle, who've been able to just get up as soon as they found out that the economy was changing under their feet, they've been able to pivot, to be really agile, 
those those guys are the ones that have had a habit of knowing their numbers and of making a forecast so uh if if i if i could give you anything from from what we've been through it's be one of those businesses you want to be like those guys and if you could model out what they've done it's been a, a combination of things it's been having um data that they can get their fingers on really easily the way that my clients do that is using zero having day daily up-to-date bookkeeping so you could look at zero today and you would know what your position was as at the end of play yesterday i think having that data to your fingertips has been really instrumental to be able to do that and then it's knowing uh, from the historical stuff that you've been looking at what that means for the future. So it's all one. It's, it's great to have the backward looking stuff. But the next step, once you've got your daily bookkeeping really working for you, is to say, and what does that mean going into the future? So it's making that plan going forward and being in the habit of looking at it regularly. So not making a plan and popping it, uh, popping it away until next year. It's saying, how do we build that into our process so that on a monthly basis, on a week weekly basis, when it's talking about cash flow on a daily basis, how do we build that into our daily process of running our business that we are uh, we're really focusing on what our finances look like? Um, the, the businesses that I've seen do really well through this period, they're not the richest ones. They're definitely not necessarily the ones with the biggest chunk of cash in the bank. Yes, they, they've not felt uh, the pain that some of the other clients that have felt, but my, my best clients, the ones that have dealt, uh, dealt uh, with this period the best have been those that have been quite tight on cash flow in the past 12 months actually and so they've got into the habit of doing those cash flow forecasts because they've needed to there's been some push to do that um, and they've learned through having that habit that it actually makes it much easier to run their business so they've continued doing that so don't think that the only way you survive a period like this is by being rich it helps for sure but it's not the only answer and um, it's actually being really good about being disciplined around numbers and those clients have also learned to to really uh, cut through their overhead so they've gone through their overheads already and cut out all of that chaff that they don't need they've stopped paying people for subscriptions that they've forgotten to cancel they've done that work already so being being careful about about what your spending is like is also part of that and um, and then what they've been able to do is really leverage the loans and grants that have been available to them and and, and furlough as well so because they already knew their numbers and they already had a plan as soon as uh, we were given an announcement about a grant they could say right i know that that falls into this month of my cash flow plan i'll tweak that and then we'll go forward with it and because the plan was already in place and of course if you made a plan in January, none of this stuff was on that plan. Um, so, so the plan isn't what it looks like now, but what they did have was a plan that they could start with and say, right, okay, so if I just change those, uh, uh, those different scenarios in my plan, it'll all just feed through and I can see where I'm at. So they weren't starting from, from scratch. They started from plan zero, plan point zero point one, and they just twisted it around to plan version, version two. And um, so, that's that's my biggest takeaway is those people are the ones that have done the best. This stuff is going to happen again. So you want to be in their shoes the next time this comes around so that you're in the best place to, to survive and thrive. So my top three tips um, is to have a plan, right? Obviously. Um, so so my, my first thing is make a plan. And that could be a very simple business plan that you then tweak. It could be your full three-way forecast so when, when we talk about three-way forecast and accounting that means cash flow plan um your profit and loss account and your balance sheet all forecasted out for the next 12 months at least so go ahead and do that now if you don't have that already um we are running a business um uh, uh, this, uh webinar especially around this kind of thing on uh, Thursday next week and we we'll, can get those um, details out to you guys. We can help you make sure that you've got those plans that you need. Um, my second tip is to know your numbers and I don't just mean know where you'd find them but to look at them and understand what they mean for you in your business. Uh, knowing your numbers is really really important as a director and, uh, uh, and the thing that I'd like uh, you to take away from this is it's one thing to look at your numbers once and then put them away 
knowing your numbers is really about looking at them on a regular basis and seeing how they're moving. So a, a, a static number gives you a certain amount of information, so much more uh, useful to have a graph that says, and this is what it looked like this time last year, and this is what it looked like this time last quarter. So you can start to track what is actually going on in your business. So know your numbers. And my third point is to surround yourself with the right tribe. Um, th this is my tribe here and uh, it's really lovely to be surrounded by people like this but I think that's another thing that I've really noticed over the three last three months or so is um, I'm in a lovely bubble of positivity with the kind of business owners that I talk to. Sometimes I put my hand out into the outside world and I bring it back really quickly because it's not very nice out there. Um, and so, and sometimes we need to know that it's not very nice out there. So there's no harm in being aware of the outside world. But what you really want to do is surround yourself with people who will hold you accountable, who understand your business and who really want you to survive. And if you've got those kind of people around you, then you're going to be able to make the right plans and you're going to be able to get yourself not just surviving, but really thriving through this next period. Thank you, Tori. Such wise words and some practical things there for us all to do as well thank you and um all of it just you know makes so much sense so thank you for sharing that and thank you for picking up nikki's bits as well and andy we're going to move swiftly on to yourself um for you to share some it hints and tips hi, hi julia hi everybody thanks for having me back on i'm going to pick up neatly from tori's last sentence there actually because we've observed one thing above pretty much anything else over the last 12 weeks or so and it's that those companies who've been active actively engaged on social media active with their networking active in conversations with customers and, and their suppliers they're the, they're the ones that have found ways to make the most of these uncertain times um Simply staying engaged, I think, with, with other people, staying within your bubble and, and dipping your hand outside every now and again as well, is often enough just to trigger the ideas that are a bit slow to come if we lock ourselves in a, a room on our own. So we've, we've definitely seen that, that a, a state of mind has been one of the biggest um, advantages that companies who've, who've made it through these difficult times have, have carried with them. Um, as a business ourselves, we took we took a bit of a hit. We took about a 35% hit overnight back at uh, the tail end of March. Um, then things leveled off. We have a, a good subscription customer base for our, our IT support services. So that's allowed us to sort of level through this period of time and take time to reflect and actually adapt our model um to reflect the, the changing needs of our customers and our prospective customers so now we've we've very much pivoted is the team term that um, is used most i think but we've pivoted to look at specifically how smaller businesses can use technology to support uh, a, a remote working or flexible working model because you know there is no doubt that if I share my screen, I can uh, start to take you through some slides. Um, there's no doubt in my mind that COVID-19 is going to have a, a lasting impact on our working practices. People we're talking to every day are sort of indicating that th there's, there's going to be a difference. Um, I mean, working from home may not be ideal for many people, but the alternative for many is a return to the daily commute and eight hours sitting in an office. And that's going to be quite a shock to go back into um, mentally as well as physically when we, we're going to be leaving so much more of our, our free time to, to commuting. And studies have actually shown that during lockdown, remote working has, has increased performance. So from our perspective, uh, I can just get our slides. Most organisations will retain at least an element of remote or flexible working. Um, this commuting time actually is so important to people. I, uh, there, there's a couple of studies that I'll just reference here, but Lloyds Bank have worked out that the average worker spends £37,000 in their working life on their commuting. 
and that's not to, to mention the time spent. Um, optimum employee engagement occurs when employees are spending between 60 and 80% of their time working remotely. And a highly engaged workforce actually, according to Gallup, gives um, a, a 20 plus percent higher profit, profitability for organizations that are, are working that way. 80% um, of employees themselves believe their productivity has increased while remote working. And that's been demonstrated, I think, many times with Sweden and their uh, four day working week that was mentioned earlier. And companies that support remote working also have 25% lower employee turnover. Um, from an HR perspective and a recruitment perspective, everyone will recognize how expensive it is to, to attract and retain employees. So we have no doubt that, that there'll be an element of remote or flexible working for organizations going forward. So how can IT help? Well, you should be looking at IT to help you in, in three main areas that are important for a flexible or a remote working um, model. The first is to keep your team connected and productive. If you think back to, to the days where we all sat in offices and we were talking to each other, it's amazing how many of those conversations actually related to simply getting the job done. Um, things like, oh, did the delivery get to Joe last Thursday? Or are you gonna be in the office tomorrow so that we can run through these numbers? Or whatever those conversations were, they happened very naturally in an office environment as a, a chat at the coffee machine or a talk across a desk. Um, so it's important to try and mimic those conversations and, and allow your staff to continue to be productive and interact with each other in a, a remote working environment. That clearly means things like Zoom and other uh, video sharing, but it also includes things like the, the ability to chat um, sort of persistently through the day with a conversation that might be peppered through a, a whole working day of eight hours or so. It's also important to remember that you need to give people access to the data that they used to have in the office, because no longer is the spreadsheet sitting on John's machine any good to Julie, who's sitting 50 miles away in, in her home office. So keeping that team connected is, is one of the key um, ways that IT can help. And of course, in order to keep your data secure and maintain control of your business, one of the, the key um, pointers that I can give is that you should keep your business and your customers data in as few places as possible. And the number of tools that you use to a minimum, you need to give yourself half a chance here of, of understanding where your data is, who has access to it and how you can keep your data secure. And for most small businesses, that realistically means cloud services, where you can access that same data from wherever you may be. And for small businesses, cloud services, more often than not, means Google's G Suite or Microsoft 365. And right now, from a commercial perspective, unless you're totally anti-Microsoft, which some are, Microsoft usually ends up on top. So cloud services, Microsoft and Google, Google um, if you hate Microsoft, Microsoft if you're fairly neutral, is probably the best way for most businesses to go. I've got a bonus tip as well if I can, and that is don't stop there. Look for opportunities where those very same pieces of, of IT can actually help you automate the tedious tasks that nobody likes to do. Um, I know, for example, Julia, that you use uh, a bookings app that saves you loads of time ping-ponging emails backwards and forwards, trying to arrange when um, a meeting might be convenient for both you and, and one of your clients. And another really good example is, is, is whether you've ever stopped to actually analyse how much time you spend as a business entering the same information into different systems. If you haven't, it's really worth giving it a go and get your team involved as well, because as a business owner, it's a really good way to find out how your business really works day to day and a great way to find out that those tasks that people really don't like could be the first ones for you to automate. 
there's no reason why your new normal couldn't be even more efficient than your old normal. And if you've already got the technology there to help you do it, it's a good way to, to move forward. So in, in sort of summary for me, many people think of IT as a, a nuisance or an expensive inconvenience, but it doesn't have to be that way. The right IT can help with almost any area of your business. It can help you run more effectively and importantly, adapt more quickly as our circumstances change again. We don't want to be in the same position as, as we were before, caught on the hop. And we've already helped lots of businesses to put just the right amount of technology in place. Uh, it's an open offer for anyone on this call that if you'd like a chat and some pointers as to how we can help you, then I'll be more than happy to catch up afterwards. That's me, Julia. You're still on mute. Okay, thank you, Andy. Some very sensible advice as always, thank you. Um, absolutely key to, to get these things sorted and it's a real opportunity and that does let, lead itself very well onto my section. I'm next. Um, it's always a bit strange introducing myself, but there you go. <laughs> um, so my biggest takeaway from the last few weeks is actually how fragile things really are and how fear strips away people's facade. And it can be quite frightening, actually. Um, but the kind of opposite to that is how genuinely authentic people can be and how they are shining through and how much help there has been out there um, for people. Um, and, you know, this goes back to something that Jay was saying, uh, kindness. You know, there, there's been, you walk down the street now and people were, were more um, happy to smile at, at people that they see. And there's been an elevation of that positivity as well. So that's been amazing to see. And, you know, that feeds on to my three tips, actually, because my first tip is something that I talk about on a fairly regular basis and always have, but it's really know who your ideal client is and it's really know what pain they're experiencing now because it may be different to what it, they were experiencing before. And actually your ideal client may have changed because the people that are experiencing the pain that you can offer a solution to may be a different group of people. So really know your ideal client and really talk to their pain and really help them, really offer a solution. People want and need to be helped and that's where you can really add value and really help um, elevate this positivity that's out there right now. Um, so, you know, Amanda, this is one of Amanda's key things, and it's, it's, it's a real bug of mine, is that sales does not have to be a negative thing. If you think of a sale as adding value to somebody, as offering a solution to a problem that they experience, then it's a truly worthwhile thing. It's, we all need to be good salespeople. And that's something that has, it's a thread that's coming through. And in a recent poll I did, 70% of business owners said that lead generation was a problem. So it's lead generation and um, people are a bit nervous about sales, you know, when's the right time to sell, etc. But if you genuinely know that you are authentic and you genuinely know the pain that your ideal client is experiencing, then actually you're just having a conversation and you're offering a solution. It doesn't need to be thought of as sales. From a technical perspective, do know your pipeline though. Um, it's really key to keep on top of those numbers as Tori was saying, so do have a pipeline, do, um, do, do you know, revisit it, look at it and have a very good robust pre-sales process in place to enable any leads to convert to sales in the most time efficient way because then you can help more people. So my second top tip is to actually revisit your plan. If you don't have a plan, get a plan, do a business plan. There's a lean canvas model out there, which is a very quick way of doing a very um, quick draft of a, of a business plan and there are experts out there in, in our community Helen Steele who will help with business plans and Tori helps with business plans as well Tori referenced a, a, a session that she's got coming up and we'll send you the link to that but have a business plan and stick to it don't just stick it in your drawer have a look at it so use and the idea of that really is of course to use any grant or any bounce back loan that you've actually received in a very wise way you need to use this time to to regroup revisit what you offer what you want to offer what you want to do and um, invest time and energy into making sure that you're shored up and I, I, I made reference at the beginning of the session to um, being in a boat the boat's our business we've been battered look and see where the gaps are look and, and, and how you can plug those gaps and for me personally as 
many of you know, I love processes and systems. And this has been a time that people can actually say, actually, that was a real bug for me. I could have had a process in place that would help. I could have had a system in place that would help me with that. So I talk a lot about CRMs and I um, automate stuff through MailChimp and Zero. all these beautiful systems make sense of them. And they really do come into their own. It's a, it's a real time to shore up your business so that you can really weather anything that's ahead. So that's my second top tip. And my third top tip, very, very speedy. It's really just genuine, just be authentic, be consistent and be visible. We've already seen, Andy's mentioned this, Tori's mentioned this, um, Carol, we've all mentioned it. The people that are out there consistently being visible and adding value are the people that um, are really um, sort of standing out from, from the crowd. So um, that's my third tip is to be authentic, be consistent and to be visible. So, um, and now I'm passing over to Amanda. Hello, hello everybody, how are you doing? So I've got three things I wanted to say and then I've got a little model that I want to share on my whiteboard, hopefully that'll work. And then I've got my three tips. So the three things that I wanted to say in terms of my takeaway from the last few couple of months are this. Number one, we are all navigating the same storm. We're in different boats. We are navigating the same storm, which means that whether you're B2B or B2C, you're kind of in it with them to a great extent. And therefore, actually putting yourself in your customer's shoes should be easier. And, and, I won't, and I won't even begin to say how really important it is to get your ideal client right. And Julia's got an amazing template for that. Your competition is also in the same situation. So your competition is also feeling this period of instability. Um, so don't worry about them. Just be your best. Be absolutely your best and make sure that you're bringing, um, you know, we don't have to have a point of uniqueness. We just need to be doing our best to be as different and as helpful as we possibly can. Um, so now's the time to connect with everybody on the list, which I'm, I'm just going to give you a couple of tips about where to focus there in a minute. And then the other one is people need a vision. So rather than sell hard or seem too desperate, give them a vision of the future. Let me give you an example. We have an office in Leatherhead, which is currently closed, and we have a vision of what workshops might look like in the future. We've got a vision that actually says you can, you can quite easily, with a large room, do some socially distanced face-to-face -face in the foreseeable future when it's allowed. Our um, our office in Fetcham, their office manager is just not having it. Oh no, it's only going to be up to six. We can't use the big room. We've put all the soft furnishes in there, furnishing in there, because um, that's where we've got to put it so that we can get only six people in the boardroom. And they haven't got a vision of the future. We're going to hopefully help them with that. But it's a good example. You know, what is your protocol going to be going forward? What are your new terms and conditions, as, uh, as uh, Tori said? So they're my three things. In terms of customers, one of the things that we found with our clients is to just be careful in terms of how much new product development you do and how many new customers you're expecting. Because let me just see whether I can share this whiteboard here. If I lose my virtual background, great, okay. Should be able to see this. And if you can't, we can always take a photo. This is a really useful matrix to use. Actually, if you've got new customers, and you've got existing customers, it is easier. I don't know if you can see the smiley face. It's so much easier to sell your existing products to your existing customers. So much easier. Why? Well, you know them, you know your products, and you know their pain points, so it's much easier. It's actually, yeah, it's okay to sell new products to existing customers, particularly if they are an iteration, um, as a result of COVID, particularly of your existing products. So maybe a virtual, um, a vir something virtual that's helped if you, if you work with clients in that way, or something that's gonna specifically help them. For example, I think I said this last time, it's one of my favorite examples. Um, a lady who sells chopping boards with um, names written in them, she's actually selling them to, sell, to send to grandparents to say, we miss you on a little, you know, on a little coaster. Same product, slightly tweaked, existing customers. She's done brilliantly well with it. Because actually, new products, really brand new products to existing customers, more tricky. And new products to new customers, 
even more tricky now i know we've got sarah talking about mar marketing and i know we we also have had some new customers coming up but it's more tricky so focus on them and then i just want to share what i call the magic matrix the magic sales matrix is to put all your customers down one side your existing customers remember because they're the easiest and then put all your products along the top and do some ticks and crosses and question marks do they all know exactly what you sell do they know how you've been tweaking your existing products and do they know that you've got some slightly new ones that they might find really really useful so that that's that that was that was my tip in terms of uh, in terms of sometimes useful to grab some a piece of paper and do that what are my top tips number one plan further ahead than the end of your nose especially with customers and help them to see that vision which was my first point of what the future might be like because actually i think we sent out a blog from the, one of the last sessions called the four seasons of covid season one we're in it it might be lasting another 12 weeks but we're actually just coming out of it season two six to 12 months season three 12 to 18 months and season four is kind of three years ahead um, so think about how you're going to help your customers going forward because some of them won't engage right now some of them it might take longer ask brilliant questions i know i always go go on about that in sales but it's such a good opportunity to connect and ask great questions none of which need to be do you want to buy one of my products or um you know what's happening that we can help with none of which need to be that actually they need to be helping people right now with my final uh, tip which is energy we are so stuck for energy right now and we can be on point and we can be energetic with our customers because actually they may may not be we don't know what's going on for them in their private lives and that and and so on so be energetic and i always talk about energy because it's it is so 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 great and actually you can just sell a bit of energy to them and they'll and you know and they'll respond so help them refer connect them with people that they need send them something useful i know i've uh, we've been doing some what, what we call lumpy post send something in the post um, that will help them or that will just make them smile thank you letters i've been sending thank you notes to people who've paid us to, to schedule or paid us in advance now i wouldn't normally send a note to do that maybe i actually should but it's so so helpful to energize people emails blogs all of those things that i know sarah um you know sarah's the expert on but your marketing to your existing customers it's called this account marketing manage to the cost uh, set make sure that you bring energy to your existing customers before you start to think oh my goodness i need 10 new ones they are my tips thank you very much thank you amanda absolutely brilliant tips as always thank you so much and max i'd like to um hand over to you now to share your biggest takeaway and your three top tips great um give me a thumbs up if you can hear me Good stuff. Uh, my name's Max. I'm going to talk about storytelling. So my top tip, I suppose, is we've got a lot less resources in some way at the moment. One resource we've got more of is time, and it's a good chance to try something a bit different and uh, learn a new skill. I sorted out my pension the other day. I'm 30 years too late, but I did it. Yeah. How about trying some storytelling? So uh, storytelling, in a nutshell, is this. Stories are about a hero. The hero wants something. There's something getting in the way and they overcome what's getting in the way to get what they want, right? Simple. But we often in businesses tell stories with the wrong hero. And this is gonna connect, I think there's stuff Sarah's gonna talk about with blogs and we've just heard from Amanda in terms of sales is who is the hero when you're telling stories on your social media, in your emails, on your blogs? It is your customer. And I like to think of it like this. The myth of Theseus and the Minotaur. You may have done this at school. If you haven't, I'll tell you what it is. So this is an ancient Greek myth. And it's about uh, Theseus. So you've got um, Crete and Athens. And King Minos of Crete was an awful man and kept on attacking Athens. So um, Athens uh, surrendered. And in exchange for surrender, they had to send 12 men over to Crete every year to be fed to the Minotaur, who was a half-man, half-bull creature who lived in a labyrinth. Simple. 
Eventually, uh, they have enough of this, the Athenians, and Theseus says, I'm gonna go over there, I'm gonna kill the Minotaur. So he goes over to Crete, and on the beach, Princess Adriadne, King Minos's daughter, gives him a ball of yarn and a sword and a shield to help him, because she immediately falls in love with him, as women often do in stories written by men. Anyway, so, he goes into this labyrinth and he lets out the yarn to, to, to find his way out. He sees the uh, Minotaur, kills the Minotaur with the sword, gets out, gets back on the ship with Adriadne and he's off. Now, the hero of that story is clearly Theseus, right? But it's impossible to do what he did without Princess Adriadne. She gave him the gear. She was the mentor that helped him out. And when we tell stories as brands, you are Princess Adriadne. It's really important to keep that front and center when you're telling stories, especially at the moment, okay? Because the customer has changed. Demand is less, we know that, but demand is different. And often I see people selling the same old stuff with the same old story. I think we need to reshape that. So that's the first thing I tell you is know your hero with storytelling. Secondly, and I'll keep this nice and quick, be story worthy. What stories are you telling that anyone's gonna care about? I'll tell you who's doing a great job of this at the moment is Brewdog. You may have seen, obviously, the Dominic Cummings stuff. I'm not going to get political. Barnard Castle Eye Test. They released a beer called Barnard Castle Eye Test, and it went viral, and it was a really great story that showed their brand, their purpose in action, and stories we show we don't tell. So maybe stop talking about how you care about customers. Show us something small that you're doing. I think Amanda's story about thank you notes, great one. Uh, and then finally... I want to talk about uh, the elephant, the rider, and the path. And I'll, this is going to be a short story, and then I'll stop talking. So Jonathan Haidt from NYU University, he's got this metaphor for behavioral change. And he says, you've got to think about the elephant, the rider, and the path. Now, we've got two bits in our brain, the rational, logical bit, and the emotional bit. The logical bit is the rider, and the emotional bit is the elephant. So imagine the rider sat on top of the elephant. The rider might think, I want to go over there but the elephant has to agree. The emotional bit has to agree. How the, um, you can tr the rider can try and pull the elephant, he can try and push the elephant where he wants to go, but the emotion isn't on side, it ain't moving. Finally, the path. If you want the elephant to go down the path, clear the obstacles and make it short. Now this is the power of storytelling. They put emotion front and center and they make a message concise, brief and memorable. So how can you put more emotion into your communications? Something I did that went a little bit viral by my standards anyway at the start of this crisis was I talked about grief and the grief we're going through. Some people uh, literally, as I, as I know on this call, and, and some people in terms of our careers, our lives, but the vulnerability and the real emotional content of that stuck, stood out and spread. And I got way more engagement than anything else I've done. So how can you get more emotion into your storytelling? So know your hero, be story worthy. Think about the elephant, the rider and the path. Uh, I've got a book coming out. That was one of the things I was grieving. It was meant to come out three weeks ago. It's been pushed to August. It's called Improvise. Use the secrets of improv to achieve extraordinary results at work. I'm sure that will be shoved in an email for you after this. Um, if not, thanks for having me and tell more stories. Brilliant. Thank you, Max. I love that. Um, I think I'm getting, I'm, I visualized my teenagers as the elephants that weren't doing what I wanted them to do. So now I've got some tactics around them as well. But thank you. And yes, the link to the book will be shared. Thank you for, for joining us. And um, Sarah, this lends itself very nicely to bringing you into it to, um, to, to, to talk about all the lovely stuff that you do too. Yeah, thanks. Um, you, you, Oh, I always love going at the end because you always just give me so much stuff that I think, oh, I can relate back to everything I'm going to talk about. So my biggest takeaways from what's currently going on um, is there's this new term that is, we always used to say business as usual, but it's now business new normal. So what is your business new normal? And have you actually told your clients what your business new normal is? And lots of people think or expect people to know, well, I posted it on Facebook. Well, why wouldn't they know what my business new normal is? Well, your reach on Facebook and LinkedIn and everything else at the moment is really small. So you need to make sure that you're telling the messages again and again and again, and you're doing it in multiple ways. Now, we know that video is absolutely king and will continue to be for a long time. So um, when we move on to my top tips, I'm going to talk to you a lot about video. So what is your business new normal and are you telling people about it? 
Um, tell them that you care, that you want them to do business with you. I've seen a lot of companies, uh, especially the major supermarkets, be a little bit like, well, we're doing you a favour. You know, you, you need to buy food from us. We're doing you the favour. I can shop at lots of different supermarkets, so don't give me reason to. It's the same with all of our businesses as well. You know, don't take for granted that just because you're now back in business um, that you can have an aggressive stance on, well, now I'm open, you know, you, you should be grateful that I'm reopening and you can do stuff with me. You know, be grateful that they're coming back to you and do those extra bits like the lumpy post. Amanda said, I've got some beautiful magnets this morning. Thank you, George. You know, stuff like that that is really going to show that you care about them. It's really, really, really important. Um, educate them on what your new normal is. And if your business has changed the way in which you do business with them, you have to talk to them. I'll give you a classic example. Uh, we've got a horse. Most you know, people that know me know that we've got a horse. And um, the stables that our, we, we, have, we put our livery, is livery, is opening now back for lessons. Now, um, we've created a, a whole load of um, explainer videos. So when people now come back to the stables, they know what the new rules are. Not in a way of you have to follow the rules, otherwise you can't ride. It's like, this is how you now need to engage with us. Um, then they're explaining the way that's keeping them safe, the client safe, everybody safe. But it's got to be done in a way that is helpful for everybody else. Um, and let them see you. Um, I know, Amanda, you, you spoke about this on the last one as well. Like, show up for your customers, keep in contact, let them know that you're there, let them know that you're care, let them know that you're not in business as well as that you're in business because often they'll go, what's happened to them? And, and your business can be really, really forgetful. So if you're not showing up, if you're not doing stuff on social, if you're not sending letters, you're not making phone calls, unfortunately, they will forget about you because the competitor will be right underneath going, it's all right, we'll pick up your business because you're, you know, you're not talking. Just communicate with them. And as I've said before, and I will continue to say in lots and lots of webinars, Facebook Lives, etc., we are in a really, really lucky time in history that we can like talk to our customers through video. We can broadcast, we can pick up the phone, we can do stuff. We're not having to put an ad in a newspaper, waiting for it to go into press and hoping that someone's going to open it. We can directly talk to people all the time. So my three top tips. One, uh, use video. I've got my child in the background. I do apologise. This is life. I'm, I'm sorry that you can see her rustling around behind me. Um, explain the videos. Uh, ex use the video to explain things. Um, whether you feel comfortable doing it face to camera or you do slides over and a, a voiceover, that's absolutely fine. But explain how you want them to do business with you and vice versa in a friendly way. They're the customer. Keep that in mind. Uh, step two: plan, create, and schedule. Um, now more than ever, if you not if you don't have a plan, create, and schedule tool as part of your digital marketing, you must must have that. Things like Hootsuite are free, so there's no excuse for not being able to afford it or not understanding technology. It's really really simple. Um, so plan, create, schedule, make your life easy. Uh, and then the final one is make sure that you're measuring, you're tweaking, and you're retargeting against all of your activity. Super, super important. Don't waste it. If someone's looked at a video, retarget against them because that's going to be the easiest way to convert uh, existing and new customers um, because you know what they're doing. We can track and trace every single activity. And if you're not doing it, you must. So measure, tweak, and retarget. And that's me. Thanks, Julia. Thank you, Sarah. Excellent. And that was um, like one of those, um, the journalists that had the, the, the child coming. That was absolutely excellent. Loved that. Thank you so much. But really valuable stuff. And actually in a recent poll that I did on LinkedIn, and it was interesting to see the engagement the actual poll had on LinkedIn. Um, I asked what the most popular way to consume content was at the moment. And I gave the four choices, uh, video, blogs, email, and podcasts. And video for you know, by far stood out, um, followed by blogs, followed by podcasts, followed by email. So um, 
absolutely spot on thank and you so much is, for that. quickly we're, we're craving the the, con the the contact with people we're craving that tactile thing so if we see somebody we feel like we're with them the amount of social stuff that's going on over zoom and stuff you know mm. just do that for your customers because they, they're missing seeing you that's for sure mm -hmm. absolutely thank you so much and um, that brings us actually rather nicely on to, to ollie so um ollie um helps businesses and their staff organizations that are not just businesses but organizations with um mental health and resilience and mental fitness and of course um not being able to see people face to face is um quite a big part isn't it ollie of of of, of that so um over to you yeah, that's great. Thanks, Julia. Um, and I think what I'm going to talk about uh, dovetails nicely into what Joe was talking earlier, but also some of the things that Max was, was getting at. So uh, my biggest takeaway uh, really is that it's all right to operate in what I've termed survival plus mode. So, you know, suddenly we've got all sorts of perceived threats. We're getting overloaded. And so actually what I decided quite quickly for our business, but also for our family is like, okay, Let's, let's reduce our expectations. Let's reduce our standards if we need to, to a certain extent. Therefore, we take the pressure off ourselves. We're all under this thing at the moment called allostatic load, where we're used to spikes of stress and, and anxiety. It's now just constant. Our stress containers are smaller and there's more in them. Okay, so be kind to yourself. Um, and that, because, you know, we all spend a huge amount of time and emotional energy, which is something that we've all got less of at the moment, trying to fight our way against these impositions and these restrictions. And we're just gonna burn ourselves out as Joe was talking about. So I think slow down, use your resources carefully. And, and I think in a measured way, uh, whether they are financial resources, whether they're emotional resources, and we can keep going and therefore give ourselves far better chance to respond to opportunities as they pre present themselves. And it goes back to this, uh, this, uh, this habit that I shared on the last, which would be the first of my tips is, stop breathe reflect and choose okay so take the time to stop calm yourself down reflect what are my options and then deliberately choose don't let yourself be hijacked by that fight or flight mechanism and so it brings me on to this uh, second tip which is i think we just need to expect some emotional weariness okay some of us have worked like this before nobody's ever lived like this before okay so we're all adapting you know probably quite differently uh we've probably made all made some progress uh since we last had the the webinar but um so as, as joe was saying be kind to yourself be kind to other people and just accept that you can't always be on top um, and by not fighting it you give yourself that capacity to endure now on the last session i talked about um this idea of self-determination theory we need three things as humans we need to have a sense of autonomy to control things we need to have this sense of connectedness relating to people and then we need to have this idea of competence that we're good at things and we can develop a capability and we do things that matter all of those are massively under threat all of those have changed our ability to achieve those has significantly been damaged okay so again thinking about how we can achieve those same sorts of um, needs in different ways and so what i found is that actually by quite early on um, doing things in my personal life have benefited me in my professional life. So fulfilling those three things in my personal life has given me the space and the mental and emotional stability to do others. And so actually, and again, you love an analogy. I've, what I've done in my personal life is quite quickly, I realized that I needed to set some goals. So I'm training for a, an ultra marathon at the moment. And for once, I'm following a training plan. OK, in the past, I used to go out and go and run and run and run and use my mind to get me over the finish line. So I'm following this training plan and a lot of it is long, slow, steady runs and then the occasional sprint session. OK, and I think this is a great analogy for using our emotions. Let's make sure that we're doing the slow, steady runs so that when we do need to surge, OK, we can do it. And by combining and knowing when to run slowly, when running, when to sprint, OK, we go ourselves that much better option of responding to those opportunities, I think. And then uh, my third tip uh, would be. Um, building this mental fitness routine. We will have all worked out um, what works for us, what doesn't, okay? And again, it goes back to Joe's tip here, but from a more psychological, emotional perspective, build those routines, okay? Pick up those things which are going to give you that energy, whether it's emotional, physical, and build it, okay? I think, you know, as humans, we are all quite haphazard, aren't we, okay? 
we try and force this chaos into some kind of order. And I think that's probably what we need to start doing now. We've we try trialed and error all sorts of things, okay, build it into this routine and then adapt it where we need to. And that's going to give us the best chance, I think, of um, you know, this is not just a marathon. This is going to be an ultra marathon, okay? And we don't know where the route's going and we don't know where the end is. Okay, it's probably just going to keep on going. So pace yourself. And that's it. Thank you, Ollie. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Um, gosh, okay. <laughs> I love that. I love that analogy. And it's, 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 it's so true. And one of the biggest things that people are saying they are struggling with are boundaries because of um, home educating kids and um, working in the same place that they're living in. So there's no clear thresholds to cross before you change mindset and become the work person, etc. So having those routines um, is, is, is absolutely key. And I love the idea of the stress bucket obviously is become smaller and therefore can overflow more easily. So thank you for that. And thank you, everybody. Um, and now it would be just really great to have just a, a, a minute from each of you on what your biggest nugget has, has been. And maybe some of the people on the webinar would also like to share what their biggest nugget has been. But perhaps, George, if we can come to you first so you could share. Yeah. Um, for me, actually, it was, it was, it was um, you know, we're, we're all here. We didn't collaborate on what we were going to talk about particularly. We had a theme. And I think there's some constant themes running through today, which I think is really good to hear. I think it'd be a nightmare if we could come up and say something completely different. Um, oops, that'd be embarrassing. Um, but actually, there's so, much, there's so, many, so, so many common themes in there. Um, for me, I, I really like the, the last thing that, that Ollie said, though, I think is just so important, which is, um, you know, the, the, the concept of, of playing the long game, thinking the long game um, and, and um, pacing yourself out. That doesn't mean, you know, sitting around and waiting. It doesn't mean you're dragging your heels. It just means, right, OK, this is this is this is a big thing we're going into. Um, and it's a case of uh, just just getting your head in that right space to to go the distance, because that's what it's going to take. So I really like that as a last as a finishing piece for it's perfect. Thank you. And, and Joe, would you like to share yours? Yeah, I I really like the a uh, couple of things actually for a bit uh, the whole sort of community feel and a lot of people talking about community and having a community of business owners and things like that and working together not competitively. I really like that. But also I have to say that the stuff some of the stuff Andy was saying about um commuting, just like the thirty seven grand spent on commuting a year and everything. I was like, What that's oh they're not a year, sorry overall lifetime, but yeah, it's it's a lot. And actually I've always thought that 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 could be heard a lot about commuting being the unhappiest bit of a person's day and cutting that down have an impact and it's really nice to hear that all that that science that Andy was talking about the studies they've done um that yeah shows that that's that's a really positive thing and so fingers crossed that all that will keep going for people that more remote working and the, the better, better results from that thank you joe absolutely and tori would you like to share your nugget yeah, sure. So I think the thing that I've already picked out from lots of different people's talks today was was about being visible. And um, those businesses that seem to have done the best are the ones that have continued to to step forward, even if it's not perfect, um, but to tell their story and to make sure that they're they're available and visible to their community. And and it's that kind of sharing that I think has really brought certain businesses and people right up to the to the top during this period. Thank you, Tori. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. Um, and Amanda. Well, shame on you, Julia Blake, for saying that sales is not always a bad thing. It's never a bad thing. <laughs> so please, please do not be scared to pick up the phone to your customers and show them a vision of how you're going to work with them. A lot of people have said that to set an expectation of how it's going to be um, because they need you. We're all brilliant, brilliant businesses and they need us. So that's me. Thank you. <laughs> and um, Max. Um, I think for me it was about uh, what Ollie was saying about um, ultra marathon and alternating between marathon mentality and sprinting. I've had to, I've had really low bits and I've had some manic bits and uh, trying to get some consistency in my approach to the week, the day, the next three or four months is something I'm going to concentrate on, I think. And also for people who, who may or may not work for us as well and giving them a clear sense of narrative and structure so yeah that'll be it thank you max thank you and sarah um i think for me i think when it, when we do these things it makes me 
realise how important it is for all of us to come together on a regular basis and actually just because so many people need some so many different areas of support but as George said we're all in synergy it's it's you know that's why I always laugh about going last and go ah it's just brilliant you know we, we all are going towards a common purpose which is making sure that we're visible in front of our customers and we're showing up and we understand what we're doing not only visibility for our customers but as Tori said visibility for our own business and cash flow and know what we're doing clarity and transparency on all of everything that we do is really really key agree more absolutely thank you and ollie uh, so what i personally took the most value from was uh was i think all the the cash flow forecasting uh, you know it's not something that comes particularly naturally to me but i know how important it is and um i think that goes into the to the sort of ultra marathon thing doesn't it you've got to you've got to keep going that extra mile just take one mile at a time okay rather than planning out 15 miles you know ahead just take one mile at a time and making sure you're checking your pace, checking your financial situation at every step is, uh, is absolutely invaluable. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And Andy? I, yeah, it's, it's, I've been reflecting while I've been listening to everybody about actually times before February, March this year and how so many of us were not comfortable with the old normal whether it be politics or life or balance between work and life or large corporations or just general behavior. And I, I see it as a really positive thing that everybody here is looking to, to look ahead to the future and make something better than we left behind. So, you know, I, I think there's, there's going to be some really tough times. There's no doubt about that. But change was coming. You know, lots of areas of the world have, have noticed that change is being forced on them. And this, this is just a, a collection of all of that for me. And, and we now have an opportunity to shape it, shape the future in the way we want, in all, in all parts of our lives. And I think from a business perspective, we've, we've been sort of given the opportunity to, to pause and think how, how do we really want to do this? What do people really need? You know, sales isn't bad because I'm helping them. Um, finance isn't bad if I know my numbers. I love stories. So, you know, I listen to Max all day long. Ollie and, and everybody else is, is just reminding us that it, it, there's, a, there's a balance that we lost somewhere in the past and uh, we're getting it back. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Makes absolute sense. And one of the things I shared earlier in the week was the Chinese symbol for crisis is made up of two symbols, one's danger and one's opportunity. So, it, it, you know, it's it, often we only see the opportunity when we have to make changes. And that can be as a result of some sense of danger. So, you know, it, it's, it's absolutely spot on. And I think for, for me is just the, the from a practical perspective, planning, 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 sticking to your plan. I think that has really, really come out. Sales, again, absolutely key. And for me, be visible. Um, I love the idea of, um, of the routine. And, and I like being the, I, I love the idea that I could be Princess Adriana. I think that's absolutely fantastic. That's made my day. <laughs> so that's absolutely key. But storytelling, and actually, you're right, putting the hero first and understanding who is the hero. I think that's, that's, that's absolutely, um, well, that's, you know, that's something that we can all bring into our content. But I just want to say, Wow, thank you again to everybody. And um, there's just one little thing that I want to share, which is really just, see, I don't know, I don't know even if I'm gonna get through it, I'm gonna get hit, have, a, have a hit of emotion, but it's the um, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. And I think that on this session in particular, we have certainly um, seen some things that we can change and some things that we can um, have the courage to make changes in our own lives as well as in our businesses. Of course, our business is, is, is uh, an extension of ourselves in many cases. So thank you everybody for being part of this. It's been invaluable yet again. Thank you everybody for joining us and um, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. We'll see you again soon. Bye. Thanks Bye. everybody. Thank Take you. Care. Bye.